Welcome to another video. So today we are looking at radioactive decay. Alright, so radioactive decay, as the name suggests, is the decay of atoms, right? And it's the decay of radioactive isotopes. So what makes an atom decay, right? So the atom decay because it actually is unstable. And unstable means that the number of neutrons and protons in the nucleus of the atom, they are not equal, right? So in the nucleus, right, we have both protons and we have neutrons, right? So though the bonds between protons and neutrons actually keeps the nucleus in its form, in its shape, right? So once you have more protons than the neutrons or more neutrons than the protons, then it makes the atom unstable, right? So that means those free ones have the capabilities of actually attracting to something else. So it causes it to deform the nucleus and will eventually cause it to decay, right? So the decaying of the atom actually gets it split, the nucleus, right? And it gives off radiation, right? So the forms of radiation that we have is alpha, beta, and gamma, right? So we have beta, which is emitted as an electron. So once you have beta radiation, it's actually just a high-speed electron moving, right? And alpha is a high-speed helium atom, right? And for gamma, it's actually a photon. And a photon is a light particle. So the particles, the pockets of particle that makes up light, right? So those are the types of radiation that we have, right? So please note the symbols. Beta is a, is a B, right? But it's not just a normal B. It's for Greek, so it looks like a normal B for us. And then alpha is that symbol, and gamma looks like an alpha, but pointing upwards, all right? So, so that's the reasons why atoms split, right? Because they're unstable. The protons and neutron numbers, they are not the same. They are not equal, right? So there's an unbalance there in the nucleus that causes it to split, right? So if we have a sample of uh, isotope, right? Then let's say we have 100 atoms of nit nitrogen or sodium, any, right? So if we have 100, at a point in time, we can tell how much will be decayed, but we're not able to say this atom will decay at this time, right? Because it's a run, random process, it's a probability, right? So just like flipping a coin, it can either go on heads or the tail, right? So because we're not able to predict the time in which a specific atom can decay, then the process is a random process, right? So it's not affected by environmental conditions. So heat or moisture, humidity, will not be able to actually alter the rate at which the atoms decay, right? So we know now that at a specific time, the same amount will decay. And therefore, we have this term known as the half-life, which it tells us that that's the time that any amount of the sample will decay to half its amount. So if we had 50 of sodium before, right, after this time is expired, then we're going to have 25. Right? If we originally had six, after the half-life, we're going to have three, right? And it continues like that. So when it moves from 50 to 25, right, and then the same time passes again, then we're going to get half of the 25, which is 12.5. And it continues and continues like that because each time period that passes your half-life, then half of what was there before will actually be left, all right, or actually be gone. Right, so that is our radioactive decay. Right, so because our atoms decay and give off the specific radiation, right now, alpha gives off so atoms that normally gives off alpha radiation are atoms that are larger, big atoms. Right, so over 30 in atomic number will actually emit alpha particles or alpha radiation. Right? Beta now, it's normally for smaller atoms, so less than 30 will emit beta radiation. And, uh, and gamma is normally those very big atoms, so normally over like 80 or 85 in atomic numbers will emit alpha, will emit gamma, sorry, radiation, right? So 
It doesn't mean, though, that a particle, an atom that's less than 30, will not emit uh, alpha. Right? But this is the normal condition that these atoms will emit. So under 30 is beta, above 30 is alpha, right? and above 80, 83 will be gamma. All right? So let's look at some nuclear equations right? that will tell us which radiation will happen and which new atom will actually be produced. Because when the atom split, right? remember if it's splitting, then that means a portion of protons will be going this way, a portion of neutrons will be going that way, right? So it's going to actually affect the mass number or the atomic number depending on the type of radiation that is emitted, right? And in that case, it's going to produce a new ele element or atom, right? And this new atom, if it's not stable, it will continue to decay until it becomes stable. So that's the process of, that's the reason for a radioactive decay to ensure that it, the final product is a stable atom, all right? So let's go with this first one here. So in physics, we're not able to, you're not required to know the name or the correct symbols of the elements, right? So on an exam, examination, they will probably give you like this, or they will just ask you to use any random symbols, right? The important part here is what happens to the, the numbers, the atomic number as well as the the mass number, all right? So in this case, we have radon 86 and 290 is going to emit, right? So because we know this is above 30, right? It's going to emit a helium, which is alpha, all right? And we know alpha is helium, 2, 4, right? So what this is saying is that we need to ensure that our product side mass number and atomic number equals to our reactant side mass number, atomic number, right? So the reactant and product, they are normally called the parent atom and the daughter atom, all right? So in this case, we notice that we've taken two for helium in the atomic number. So that means we're going to mod minus six, 86 minus 2, all right, to give us 84. So the atomic number of polonium is 84. And we do the same for the mass number. So it's 219 minus 4, right? And we get 250. All right, and that's our atomic and mass number for polonium. And all these equations normally gives us a, some energy, right? So that's how you would balance a nuclear equation if it was an alpha being emitted because it's over 85. And also because it's over 83 as well, we can give a gamma being produced. Now you notice gamma does not have a change in the atomic or mass number. All right, so that's very important because it's just a high speed light, it doesn't affect the atomic number or the mass number, right? So there's no change that it will cause for polonium in its atomic or mass number, all right? Th let's look at carbon. So carbon six and atomic mass number is 40. So it's less than 30. So we know that it's going to be a beta, right? So please, we have to take note of the negative one there, right? So we're not just going to use one, we're going to use negative one. So we need negative one plus a number to give us six, right? So that means the number has to be higher than six, which is seven. So seven minus one gives us six, right? There is no change in the mass number, so the mass number remains the same. And element seven is nitrogen. And we know that, so I did not write that one there, right? So we notice now, let's look at this, because this one is easier to calculate. If we look at the protons here for the daughter atom, it is 7, right? And the neutron is 40 minus 7, which is 7. So we know both numbers are equal. And in that case, this atom of nitrogen is actually stable. So it will no longer go ahead and decay again. Right? So this one was unstable because we have six protons, right? And the neutron will be 14 minus six, which is eight, right? So we have a difference in the numbers, so it's unstable, so it decays and actually becomes a stable atom of nitrogen, all right? Let's look at the third one here. So we have radon, radium, sorry, 
to give rain out. So because it's again over 30, so we know that it, it's going to emit helium, all right? And it's over 83 as well, so it's going to give an alpha as well. So we know helium is 2, 4. Gamma does not make a change, all right? So therefore, it's 88 minus 2, which is 86. And it's 2, 2, 4 minus 4. 2, 2, 6, sorry, minus 4, which is 2, 2, 2. All right, so we get our atomic and our mass numbers for radon. All right, and finally, let's look at technetium. All right, now the purpose of why I used technetium was to actually show this. So in this case, this question would be that technetium emits gamma radiation only. All right, and this is because technetium is actually a synthetic equation. Element, sorry. All right, so it's synthetic, so it's man-made, right? And it emits only gamma. And if you need to write a nuclear equation for that, that it only emits gamma, then that means we have to write back the same technetium 4399 plus the gamma, all right? Because remember, gamma does not change the atomic number as well as it does not change the, the mass number, all right? So that's it, guys, on the reactive decay and how to get our nuclear equations. Alright, so thanks very much for watching and see you guys next time.